results of today's contest. Uh, we will proceed further. I would like to invite chief guest of uh, this event, Honorable Sardar Mahmoud Masood Khan, President Azad Jammu and Kashmir, for his valuable address. Mr. Sardar Mahmoud Masood Khan, President of Azad Jammu and Kashmir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Mr. Ghulam Muhammad Safi, who is convener of APHC, Mr. Faiz Naqshbandi, convener of APHC, Brigadier Dr. Muhammad Khan, Mr. Muhammad Idris Abbasi, Secretary Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Cell, Raja Sajid Latif, who is director at JKLC, team of JKLC, dear students and judges who are present here. Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum to everybody. Let me confess, I'm a bit emotional right now because I have attended many debates on Kashmir, but this debate today, this declamation is the best I have attended ever. And let me complain to the boys that while girls were clapping and applauding thunderously, most of the boys were silent or impassive. So boys, do you think that this war for Kashmir would be fought by girls only? If not, please applaud with full vigor. And I want to pay a special tribute to all the participants. And I'll name all of them and request them to stand up. And they are Ammar and Atiya and Ijaz and Faisal Kabir. And would you please start getting up? And Faisal Kabir, Farooq Owais, Huma Kosar, Manahal, Shafiq. Najam Yunus, Hamza, and Zulash. Are you all standing? Well, I'll request this whole, the audience, to stand up and applaud for them. Please sit down. You made these very heart-rending, moving presentations. And my congratulations to all of you. The content, the style, the passion behind all the presentations. I was really touched. You touched my heart and my compliments to all of you. I also want to pay a tribute to Mr. Idris Abbasi who has organized this declamation because this declamation is out of the ordinary. And my special compliments to the Kashmir Liberation Cell who have done a fantastic job in putting together, aggregating such talent from all over Azad Kashmir. Somehow I feel confident today that our job would be done if we have speakers and individuals like you who are so articulate and who are so passionate there is no way india can continue to occupy our territory called jammu and kashmir i'll try to be brief because you've said it all when i was listening to you i was in fact feeling as if you are resonating my feelings, my words, and you were reflecting the feelings of the entire nation of the Jammu and Kashmir and the entire nation of Pakistan. So my compliments once again to all of you, to these illustrious, outstanding speakers who spoke today in front of us. I therefore be brief. It's a historical issue. The issue of Jammu and Kashmir is a historical issue. 
It's a geographical issue. It's a historical issue because this territory called the Jammu and Kashmir Territory actually belonged to Pakistan. But India decided to occupy it forcibly. And it's a geographical issue because the people of Jammu and Kashmir, who are the key constituents, they have to decide who would have sovereignty over the geography, over the territory of Jammu and Kashmir, both Azad Kashmir and the Indian occupied Kashmir. It's also a human rights issue. It's a humanitarian issue. You have explained and explicated it in detail. I don't want to go into details. But what I want to tell you is that yes, when people are killed, and when women are raped, and when people are tortured and incarcerated, and there is no mercy for them, and they are made aliens in their own land, and their entire land is cordoned off, and where people are treated as prisoners and criminals in their own land, and they are denied freedom, these are human rights violations. And I always add to that that these are not human rights violations, because that sounds euphemistic. These are crimes against humanity. These are war crimes. This is genocide. This is ethnic cleansing. This is what is happening in the Indian occupied Kashmir. This is a humanitarian issue. What is humanitarian law? What does humanitarian young boys and girls, what does humanitarian law say? He says, even in a conflict zone where there's a war, you do not kill people disproportionately. You take precautions and you never shoot at non-combatants. But Indians are precisely doing that. These 700,000 troops there are precisely doing that. They are targeting civilians, unarmed civilians. One girl said that there are militants there. Let me tell you, but girls and boys, there are no militants in Kashmir. There is a bit of resistance there, very small numbers. There is terrorism there in the Indian occupied Kashmir. But this is terrorism by the Indian state. Indian state is a terrorist state. And they are conducting state terrorism directly from Delhi through the instrumentality of their occupation forces. That there be no mistake about it. India is not committing atrocities only in IOK. I always say that it has unleashed three wars against Pakistan. One is in IOK where they are killing our brothers and sisters mercilessly. And then across the line of control, they kill people in Azad Kashmir and they target civilians. And yesterday I was getting a briefing and there was an infant sitting in the lap of her mother. And there was shooting, targeted shooting, and the little hand of that infant was blown off. And the face of that infant was riddled with shrapnels. This is India's humanity. This is India's real face. This is India's terrorism. And then they have unleashed the third war against Pakistan. And this is a proxy war because they target Balochistan, they target Fata and Karachi and all the cities of Pakistan with terrorism. Why do they do that? They say, we do it because of your stand on Kashmir. You abandon Kashmir and we will cease all these three wars. And we say, no. And this generation, your generation, has loudly and categorically and clearly said today, no to the Indians. This demand. Let me tell you that India's appetite is not satiated by these killings. They go around the world and they try to demonize Pakistan and the Kashmiris. They say, we, the Indians, are the victims and the Kashmiris are the victimizers because they are terrorists and they want to isolate the state of Pakistan and they will never be able to do that and they want to demonize and paint as, us as the Kashmiris as terrorists. We are not terrorists. Many of the speakers emphasized that we are harbingers and advocates of peace. We want peace and 
amity and a democratic and political solution to the issue of Jammu and Kashmir, to the exercise of the right to self-determination of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. I endorse the demands made by the students here. Let me tell you, I also call upon the United Nations Security Council not to remain silent. There was a very compelling speech made by one of the speakers about this silence, this eerie criminal silence by the international community. I also mu add my voice to that. And I said that I would say that the United Nations Security Council should not hide behind expediency. And yes, Kashmir is burning and paradise on earth is on fire. And this conflict, and one of the speakers said that Kashmir is a smoldering volcano. Yes, I agree. And therefore, the Security Council should wake up. Kashmir is becoming a symbol of the failure of the United Nations. And if the United Nations Security Council cannot intervene in the Kashmir dispute, it should pack up and dismantle its apparatus throughout the world. Again, I would like to say that the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, should not hide behind bland statements saying that... I'll stop for the... Azam.